So we're going to do some voice recording. We'll start with a new session. Create blank. Wave file, 16-bit, 44.1, and just use our last input-output settings. And on my desktop, I've created a folder to save my work. And so I'll put it into my Pro Tools work. Call it Voice Recording. And then we'll save it. Now to locate the edit window for Pro Tools, there it is there under Window Menu. And you can see we've got a fairly cluttered screen. So to clean things up a bit, we're going to select in the toolbar Minimal and then open up a number of the tools that we want to use. So zoom controls, transport, and MIDI controls. There's another way of viewing those same things over here. And uh, the track list and region list can also be closed using this other drop menu. And we'll go back and we'll close our region list over here using the view menu. Our rulers, we've got nearly everything open. There is a minimal command down the bottom there, but there's another way we can adjust it, and we'll go to this one over here called Main Menu. And now we'll just use the tempo. We're going to create a click track, and that's so that we can talk against it and stay in time. At the moment, it's 120 beats per minute over here on our tempo bar. We're going to make it a manual tempo by turning off the conductor man and we'll change the tempo to 100. We've got a number of different um, displays open there in the settings, so we'll click minimal and now we're just going to activate instrument, inserts and also input outputs. We're now going to create a new track, a new audio track. And so we go to create one, which is mono, an audio track. Then we'll go with samples and then create. Let's just come up here in our edit window. We'll adjust the track height, making it large. We check the input output, in this case here, the input, which is on mono one. Also in the setup menu, this is where we adjust the inputs. We won't go into that in a big way now. Fair to say you need to have those set up correctly. We're going to use waveform view and we'll arm the track. And in the transport we click record. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Have a listen back. One, two, three, four. So that's one, pretty much in time. Three, With the metronome click. So now we'll disarm the track. We're now going to choose the smart tool. So we click on that little section there. And where we position our cursor on the region changes. So that's what makes it smart. So we're resizing the region. And to do this, we want to have a grid quantize of about an eighth note. You can have different values. Trim the end, but now we'll trim the beginning. Now we're going to set up loop play. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's not totally accurate, but it's enough that we can go with. We'll go with the first half of the count. Let's listen to what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one. Okay, we can get by with that. Okay, so now by going to the lower third of the region, we can get the grabber tool and move it across. And we're going to set up loop now by going to region, loop, and we'll repeat it. And we'll make three loops. You can see that we've got the little loop icon there. One, two, three. Four, one. Now when we change the tempo to 120 beats per minute, for instance, the audio recording shifts. Now that's one of the difficulties of looping. One, two, three, 
four. It's shifted one, because two, it's, the region is based upon samples rather than tick or fixed positions. If we take it back to 100 beats per minute, it all lines up nicely again. So we must change the region to being a tick based. So we come across to here, click ticks, and then under elastic audio, we select polyphonic. Now when we type in 120 beats per minute, it all lines up well and plays quicker. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, now we're going to insert four. some additional tempo changes. So we come across to our very tempo tool. At measure two, we click and then add a marker tempo change. You can see it says location two and then 140 beats per minute. Go to measure three, click. Go to the plus to insert the tempo change. Type in 160, checking the locations, measure three. And we'll just drag out the loop region. It's pretty simple. Lower right edge. Now click at measure four. Click the add tempo change and we'll bring it back to 100. Let's have a listen to it. One, two, three, four. 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 We're going to record our own tracks now, so we'll deactivate the conductor track, so it's now a manual tempo, change it to 100 beats per minute, so it all lines up nicely. We're going to create three audio tracks, make sure that they're mono, and it says audio, but we change it to ticks. Now the reason we change to ticks is because we want to use loops. Now we'll just change the name of this track to click, or the count, sorry. And choose OK and resize it to small. We'll make the other tracks a bit larger. And we can do that also by just moving the pointer underneath the track and dragging down. And do the same again underneath. Click, hold, and drag down. We'll arm the track that we're now going to record. <clears throat> One, two, three. So I'm going to trim it up a bit, resize it, so that we just have one measure of the drum beat sound. I'll activate the loop, play. One, two, three, mm -ta. Mm -ta. one, two, three, mm -ta. that loops well. So I'll move it back to the start. We check the ticks are there, the elastic audio we turn on, and we choose polyphonic. Now that's our loop. We go up to region, choose loop, and we'll do four repetitions, including itself. Turn the conductor track back on with the tempo changes from earlier. So I've fast forwarded to a completed recording now. I'm going to set up a loop on the ruler here. Make sure that loop plays on. I'm now going to open the mix window and adjust the track volumes. So we're just seeking a balance between the tracks. We're now going to do a mix of our song. So we go to File, Bounce To, and Disk. And we choose an MP3 format in this case, because we're happy to have a small file size. Format stereo interleaved. Convert during the bounce is important. Then we're going to title it Voice Recording, and the encoder we're going to choose is the 128, just to keep it small, and the fastest encoding, just because we can put in a whole lot of other settings if we so wish. We now need to navigate where we want to save it, so we go to my Pro Tools work area, Voice Recording, give it a title, Voice Recording Bounce will do. Mm -ta. Mm -mm -ta. Mm. It'll, once it's mixed down, Locate where the file is and check that it has all bounced correctly. And I'm opening it with QuickTime Player. 
Mm-ta, 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 mm-ta. And that sounds pretty good. Mm-ta, mm-ta, mm-ta.